Assalamu alaikum, uh, Sheikh Shabir Ali. Uh, my question is, there were uh, some uh, manuscripts discovered in uh, the Israeli desert uh, known as the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, from uh, the last time I checked uh, the scholarship on this is that it comes really close to the Islamic point of view, <laughs> uh, to, the, uh, to the dismay of uh, some, uh, if you'd like to say, Christians. Can you shed light on this uh, issue and uh, exactly which books were discovered in the Israeli desert and uh, how it comes really close to the Islamic point of view? Uh, this, there is a debate between Islam and Christianity on, uh, on so many uh, theological uh, uh, issues. Jazakallah. Should have brought my pedometer today. <laughs> Get, you get, you're going to get good exercise. Now, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, are uh, referred to a set of documents that were discovered in the year 1947. Uh, and, and these are scrolls that were uh, left buried from a community that lived uh, around the area of the Dead Sea in caves. Uh, around the, the first century BC and the first century AD. So that means just before Christ and a little bit after Christ until the destruction of the uh, temple and uh, the uh, exodus of the Jewish people from that uh, Palestine region uh, if, during the Jewish revolt in the year 66 to, to 70. Uh, of our common era. So I said uh, BC and AD. Nowadays, academic scholars uh, say BCE and CE, before the common era and the common era, to avoid saying Christ and, and making Christ central to the dating, because they say the dating should be universal for all people, not Christocentric. So th that's only uh, a, a modern sensitivity that uh, I, I thought I should point out. But I've used the term BCE and 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 uh, I've used the term BC and AD because that's what most people have learned in in school, and we still remember it that way, right? Okay, so about a hundred years uh, before Jesus, and for another a um, uh, little bit more than half a century after Jesus, there were these Jewish communities there, uh, referred to as Qumran communities, named after the place where where these uh, Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And they had naturally copies of the Bible and uh, that they were reading and studying, but they also had documents which are particular to that community. For example, they had a document that is now referred to as the War Scroll. Uh, and they had a document entitled Manual of Discipline. So they were a disciplined community who in some way uh, was ready to uh, go to war if necessary against the Romans to reinstate the law of God. Since the uh, David monarchy had uh, been uh, uh, out of uh, vogue uh, for many centuries. David was a king, so too was his son Solomon. And after his, in the time of his king Solom of, of Solomon, there was discontent uh, among the Israelites with Solomon's rule. Uh, it is said in the Bible. And after him, the kingdom split between uh, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Uh, and eventually the Babylonians came in and uh, sacked uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the Israelite rule and took the Israelites, uh, the Israel elite into captivity, into Babylon. And uh, there has always been a lasting hope among the Israelites that eventually uh, they will overthrow foreign rule and institute the law of God. So uh, the people of the Dead Sea Scrolls were apparently preparing for this. They had uh, secluded themselves from society, not wanting to live under Roman rule, and uh, they were governing themselves according to their own rules, which they understood to be the law of God for their community. When their scrolls were discovered, and among their scrolls were found to be copies of the uh, Bible, uh, the various books of the Bible, it was necessary then to revise some of the Bible to bring that into agreement with uh, some of the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, wording of some passages because what is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls were thought to be more ancient than some copies of the Bible which had been in existence and which had been the basis 
for modern translations uh, of, of the Bible. So, but those modifications and improvements were uh, largely of a fairly minor nature when it comes to the disputes that occur of a theological nature between Muslims and, and Christians. Uh, the matters of uh, theological importance between Muslims and Christians are basically three. Uh, um, is, is Jesus God, and by extension is God a trinity? Uh, two, uh, did Jesus die for the sins of humankind, or uh, must we uh, do what is right to please God and so uh, seek God's forgiveness for our sins uh, with, with nobody paying the price for your sin? And three, uh, do we go for our final information uh, to the Quran or to the Bible? I think these are the three main uh, issues that are there theologically between Muslims and Christians. And the Dead Sea Scrolls do very little to settle these uh, issues. Uh, this we do not have any information uh, about from, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, about the crucifixion of, uh, of Jesus. Though you're right, this is also one of the issues, but, but uh, this is not one of the three major issues. The three major issues I've identified is like, even if he's crucified, what is the purpose of his crucifixion? Is that for the sins of humankind, or did he die as a martyr? Um, and so, so I think that's where the, the crux of the issue is. But unfortunately, the Dead Sea Scrolls do not allow us to, to, de to answer this question. Uh, what may, um, uh, maybe you're referring to not, you mentioned crucifixion. Perhaps you're referring to not to the Dead Sea Scrolls, but another set of documents that were discovered actually two years before the Dead Sea Scrolls. In 1945, another set of documents were discovered. Dead Sea Scrolls, 1947. Nag Hammadi Library. The Nag Hammadi Library was discovered in 1945. Uh, this was a library, of, well, a cache of documents that uh, come from early Christian centuries, from the second and third centuries of Christianity. Where they were buried sometime in the fourth century uh, when, it, uh, uh, when, when Constantine had become a Christian and Christianity had become Roman Christianity. Uh, the, the religion and the state had merged, and now uh, certain books were banned to be read. So uh, those who wanted to preserve their banned books, put them in, in uh, clay jars and hid them in the Egyptian desert, and they were later on discovered in 1945. They're referred to as the Nag Hammadi Library, uh, a, co a wide collection of documents. Uh, many of them are, are characterized as Gnostic documents. Gnost they refer to or describe a form of Christianity that is now referred to as Gnostic Christianity. Gnostic after the, the idea from Greek Gnosis, which means to know. Uh, so th th there were some Christians who felt themselves to have a higher form of knowledge, and uh, they came to be referred to as Gnostic Christians. Among these, uh, among these documents, there are at least uh, three which uh, show that Jesus was not on the cross. Or if, if something like him was on the cross, that's only a, a, a physical uh, part of him, but it's not the true spiritual person. Uh, while people would look and see that there is Jesus on the cross, uh, Jesus would be talking to Peter from the side, for example. So Peter looks at Jesus and says, but you're there. And he says, no, that's not me. That's only a physical a representation of me, but I am the real one, and so on. Uh, so there are documents like this among the uh, Nag Hammadi uh, library.